I'm not gonna sugarcoat this one. Shangri-La might be the most hated zombies map of all time. In the past, I have called it my least favorite map, sometimes even below Transit and Die Rise. Okay, Pat, what's your, what's your least favorite? It's gonna trigger some people. Oh, Shangri-La. And as a whole, there's always been a group in the community against this one. Now, at the time of this map's release, Treyarch was coming off of four consecutive, highly successful map releases. We had Darice, Kino der Toten, Ascension, and then Call of the Dead. So given the string of perceived home runs by the community, it was looking like COD Zombies could do no wrong. Map after map, Treyarch had been crushing it, and fans were extremely excited for the third DLC installment of Black Ops 1. On release, however, Shangri-La was polarizing to say the least. While most casual players despised it, even the hardcore fans were split on it. It was tight, challenging, and above all, frustrating. As time has gone on, however, it seems like this map has been gaining popularity, though. Shangri-La has been aging in the background like a fine wine, only getting better as time continues on. And so today we're going to be looking at what made it so hated by the community, but also what caused a shift in how we now view it. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Zombies Retrospective. Also, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing to help us reach our goal of 3 million subscribers. We're getting close now, but hey, let's get into it. Now, if there's one thing that stands out on Shang, whether you hate it or love it, let's get this out of the way first and foremost, it's going to be the beauty of this map. Shangri-La is the most beautiful zombies map of all time, no questions asked. This thing is a visual masterpiece. And looking back, this was only more true since up until this point, pretty much every map had been dark, gloomy, or just plain gross. But for the first time in the series, zombies delivered with absolute beauty. Shangri-La is an ancient ruin abandoned in the middle of a thick, luscious jungle. It's bright, colorful, and has remained as the pinnacle of beauty as to which all other maps are compared to. But I think at this point we all know how amazing Shangri-La looks, so let's dive a little bit deeper. Now it seems like from Call of the Dead and on, Treyarch was in a hugely creative mode, continually making improvements. I have a huge admiration for this continual effort to evolve and expand the maps, and while Call of the Dead, despite its changes, still felt very true to zombies, Shangri-La took even more risks and was a step further from what people thought the series was. If I had to describe Shangri-La in one word, I would call it hostile. It's a map where everything is against you, more so than ever before. First of all, the map has tightened up drastically compared to its predecessors, probably only weighing in at around 13 and a half Nocturne Totems. With that, the map is also super narrow, with hardly any places to adequately train. You've got all sorts of traps around the map, like the spikes and the quicksand. The map has two new special zombies, the Shrieker and the Napalm, which add another dynamic to the level of difficulty. On top of that, the Wonder Weapon doesn't actually kill zombies, and so in order to use it effectively, you have to actually take damage. Also, monkeys return and they steal your drops. Overall, Shangri-La is a map that doesn't try to hide the fact that it it, it hates you, and from the very first round, it can be super off-putting to players. But is this difficulty around Shangri-La the thing that makes it bad? Well, for the same reason I didn't say Kino is bad because I personally find it too easy, I can't say Shang is bad because most of the community finds it hard. And that's because difficulty is a subjective experience, and what one person may find impossible is another player's perfect challenge. So because of this, we can't use difficulty as a metric to determine merit. But perhaps, as we did with 5, it might be rightfully fair to take a look at whether Shang is unfair. In our 5 retrospective, I claimed that people dislike it because it achieves difficulty through being unfair to the player. But to be honest, I don't know if Shangri-La is the same way. Early rounds on Shang are probably the most challenging. This is the tightest Black Ops 1 map, and with limited resources, it can be very easy to go down if you're not overly cautious. Even round 4 can be hard. 
But I don't think that early rounds in Shangri-La are too hard. If you have the skills, you'll manage. So you can't really call that unfair. I mean, as the saying goes, just get good. But another comment I see is that there are too many mid-round bosses. Every single round, from around 5 and on, either a Napalm or Shrieker zombie will spawn. And to a lot of people, this is not only too much, but too challenging. But I would also disagree with this argument. See, while to some players they may pose a challenge, if you're capable of playing this map at all, the tight spots are probably likely to be a bigger threat than these bosses. The Shrieker can blind you, but that's really all he can do beyond that of a normal zombies. I mean, yeah, it runs fast, but there is only one that spawns at a time. I mean, if you want a real challenge, go to Verrucht where every single zombie is that fast. But there is also the Napalm zombie, which I think is a little bit more difficult, yet still relatively balanced. Now with Oat Jug, yeah, he's a bit much. His explosion will kill you instantly, and even when you have Jug, it can cause a big chunk of damage. He can also mess up your training loops and cause you to get cornered. But again, I, I don't really think that it's unfair. The Napalm Zombie walks incredibly slow, so attentive players should have enough time to take him out. So, I mean, yeah, they're, they're challenging mid-round bosses, but that's the point. Maybe they spawn a little too often, but they're certainly no worse than George, Nova Crawlers, or even mid-round Hellhounds. I mean, even up until this point, it wasn't uncommon to have special zombies spawn in every single round. So I can't really see much of an argument here that these guys are unfair to deal with. And so really, all we have left on this argument are monkeys. Now, while I absolutely detest Ascension monkeys, these ones are super helpful. I don't know how you're going to say that the monkeys on Shang are unfair or even annoying for that matter. So because of these monkeys on Shang, you basically have between 5 and 10 seconds to get a drop before a monkey will come and pick it up. From there, they carry it away back to pack a punch as the drop cycles every 3 seconds or so. Now, Not only is this not that hard to deal with, but it's extremely beneficial. The monkeys may in fact be my favorite addition to Shang. They allow you to easily turn carpenters and early nukes into double points and max ammos, allowing you to not only save points, but accrue them faster. Plus, after picking up the drop, another monkey will spawn in to attack you, and if you kill it before it touches you, you are awarded 500 points. And if you're super careful, that can be a thousand if there is a double points active. I cannot begin to express how useful this is, especially in the early games. Getting points on Shangri-La becomes easy if you know what you're doing, and this provides a balance to the difficulty. And then also, of course, as the trend was continuing on, you can get free perks of them if you're super careful. I mean, this can be super challenging to time, but it is obviously rewarding. So yeah, Shangri-La can be hard. But I wouldn't say for a second that it's a map that treats you unfairly. The early rounds where you're still setting up are by far the hardest, but monkeys allow for you to get set up super quickly. In solo, you can usually have four perks, two guns pack-a-punched by round 10 if you're efficient. And so I think Shangri-La works because of this. It is certainly above average in difficulty, but it also gives you more to work with. It's harder, but you can be stronger. So in my eyes, perfectly balanced. And then on top of everything I just said, you've also got the wonder weapon, the JGB something. Now I used to really detest this weapon too, but upon returning to zombies, I think I need to take that back. The baby gun is not only amazing, but also pretty fair. So it basically shrinks the zombies to make them so weak that you can kill them by walking over them. This works forever, so it's theoretically an infinite damage wonder weapon. But it doesn't just instantly blast everything in your way like the thunder gun. You have to be strategic about it, because it forces you to walk back into the direction of your horde. And so with the tight nature of this map, there can be zombies lurking in the corners, so you at least need to be smart with this thing. I mean, it's like 95% OP, but the key here is that you're not guaranteed safety with it, and I think that that is the best formula for a wonder weapon. The one thing I really hate about it though is that it seems to have super low odds in the box, and it's just a little bit frustrating. But Overall, I do think it is a good wonder weapon. So I'm really starting to sound like someone who can redeem Shang. But there's one thing that to this day still irks me. 
Shangri-La requires very high levels of communication to play co-op. And I think this is equally, if not more of the reason as to why people hated Shangri-La, especially when it first came out. I mean, just show of hands, how many people out there have PTSD from trying to pack a punch on this map with three randoms? See, packing it solo at Shangri-La is a piece of cake. <laughs> you literally just step on a rock and you're done. But with each and every player added to the map, an additional stone has to be stepped on at the same time. And this is where things get dicey. So sure, let's say you and the boys have been playing a lot of zombies, you all got mics, and you're capable of following the most basic of directions because you have an IQ of more than 20. Awesome. But let's say you're in a four player randoms game. Well, nine times out of 10, you're gonna have a bad one. And that's because most zombies lobbies resemble the following, okay? And you got Timmy. He's eight years old and has never made it past round 10. When I, when I die one time, somebody help me again. You've also got some random 18 year old with five family members screaming in the background. And then last but not least, of course, is the no miker who has no intention of listening to a word you have to say. It can be hard enough to get randoms to open doors. So it really surprises me that this was an addition they added into the game. I think really the simple solution here would have just been some sort of sound that was made whenever a player stepped on one. I mean, how easy would that have been just to communicate to people, hey, Let's pack a punch. Sadly though, there was practically nothing. And this really is the mortal sin of Shangri-La. It's not even so much that this map is too hard, but rather that to many people, it was impossible to play. You literally could not pack a punch. And of course, as pack a punch is one of the key defining features of zombies, this made it so that people just didn't want to play it. And so it's here where Shang loses big points. Also, I should mention that Shang doesn't really feel like it's designed for four players. It's definitely primarily a training map, and not only is there not enough room to train, but because the optimal strategy is a half map loop, without strong communication, it is really easy to bump into each other and cross trains. I don't think four player Shang is completely awful as you can actually camp, but the map definitely excels with games of two people or less. Now, the other thing people like to do is tie this communication arguments into the Easter egg. And I don't really like to do that. I mean, yeah, Shangri-La's Easter egg is tough, but good luck attempting any Easter egg in four player randoms. The Easter egg isn't a required thing you have to do, and it rightfully should be heard. It's an Easter egg that requires a lot of teamwork, but it is worth the challenge in the end. I mean, the very first step completely changes the atmosphere into eclipse mode, which looks amazing. And the rest of the Easter egg follows an interesting set of steps with a cool storyline that ultimately rewards one player with all eight perks permanently. It's so good that a lot of people say that this was the first true Easter egg in Zombies. You can look at Ascension like it was an alpha, then Call of the Dead as the beta, and Shangri-La is version 1.0, which I can totally see. I think that Shangri-La is a very strong Easter egg, but it would be nice if all players got permanent perks rather than just one. That's a little weird to me. Plus, it's also annoying because you can't do any of the steps with less than four people, which really excludes a big portion of the community. It's like, I can't even go into Eclipse mode just for fun. It's kind of lame. But overall, the Shangri-La Easter egg is definitely considered a classic amongst the community. So Shangri-La is beautiful and challenging. When this map first dropped, the challenge was the biggest reason why people hated it. That's and the requirement for proper communication in a time where not everybody had mics. But something I have been experiencing is a shift in how I look at this map. Shangri-La used to be one of my least favorite maps of all time. And upon playing it again, I can now say it's the most fun I have had thus far on Black Ops 1. It seems like Shangri-La has aged like fine wine. And my view is something that a huge portion of the community shares. 
It seems like as the community has gotten better at zombies, this map has become easier to consume. I mean, when a map is so hard that you can't even get past round 10, it's hard to appreciate anything else about it. But as we have improved and the average overall level of difficulty has gone up, Shang just doesn't feel as daunting anymore. When it dropped, it was possibly the hardest map of all time, certainly at least two, but now it just feels challenging. It's like hard, but not overwhelming. Plus, the issue of randoms has also sorted itself out. If you're going back to play Shang on BO1 or even BO3, you're probably doing it with a team you know and who has mics. So communications issues seem to have helped the overall perception of this map as well. And so now, after all this time, I think the community can agree that Shang is a good map. It's similar in content to its two DLC predecessors, but the fat is trimmed. It's not just physically tight, but also developmentally. Unlike with Call of the Dead and Ascension, there's just no wasted space on this map, and it feels like everything has a use or a purpose. Each area has a perk machine, box location, or at least something to give the area meaning. You've got the minecart, water slide, and the geysers, which are impeccably placed shortcuts. I mean, this map has more mobility than Call of the Dead, yet is half the size, and really is how Call of the Dead should have flowed. So getting around, I mean, apart from the annoying sand trap, isn't ever a problem. And while it can be a little bit too tight for four players, I still don't think it's quite as bad as five. So now I want to do a bit of a personal address. I looked back to my first ever top five. You guys remember that? The top five worst zombie maps of all time? In that video, I actually ranked Shangri-La as the second worst map ever. And what I wanted to do is actually look back to my reasoning in the past as to why I hated it so much. Coming in at number two on our top five worst zombie map list, I'm sorry, Adam, we have Shangri-La. This is a bad map, okay? What's good with it? Uh, I don't know, the colors, the wonder weapon, the list pretty much ends there. This is a bad map. Two routes to the power, and that's it. You gotta do a full rep, a full uh, map train. You know, it's not fun with more than one person. Monkeys steal your perks. There's this stupid sand trap that 95% of the time you die when you go through it. Who thought it was a good idea to put an exploding zombie on one of the closest quarter maps of all time? Oh, and that Shrieker zombie? Yeah, that's a really good one too. I love not being able to see things. It just adds such a great challenge. It's so good. And really, it would have been number one on our list had Treyarch not consumed paint thinner before making Black Ops 2 Zombies. So yeah, I don't really think that my points here are all that valid anymore. So first thing I say is it's unoriginal with two roots. Okay, sure, th that's fine, I guess. But really, I mean, the layout hasn't changed that much even up to today. I mean, sure, there's the different designs, like maybe Shadows of Evil, but Garod Krovi, Revelations, those are pretty much two route maps still. Full map training is annoying. Well, that's a fair point, I guess, but you can train in the AK-74 room if you're good. I also say Monkey still drops, Napalms and Shriekers suck, Sand Trap sucks. It seems like all my complaints here are just that it's hard. And so looking back with this new viewpoint, I really don't think that any of my old points here were justified. Honestly, if I'm being completely honest with myself, I was just bad and there's not much else to it. And now I think a lot of people probably felt the same as me about this map. It was too hard, so you just wanted nothing to do with it. But yeah, I mean, looking back now, I think Shang is a really strong map. It delivers everything that Ascension and Call of the Dead brought, but even more. It does all these things, but tighter and better. It's just got all the Black Ops 1 fat trimmed, and I hardly have anything bad to say about it. Now sure, it's not the most content we've ever seen from a Zombies map, but I certainly think it was the most for the time. Shangri-La is a challenging, but highly rewarding map, and if you're willing to put the time into it, it will give back everything you give, and really provide you with an amazing Zombies experience. You know, perhaps it's not the case that Shangri-La has aged like fine wine, but rather that we have finally grown to appreciate it for what it is. And honestly, after all these years, I am genuinely really happy to have finally come to appreciate this map. My final rating for Shangri-La is an 8.8. .8.